Hi, I'm Mike Mulvaney, Cropping Systems Specialist at the University of Florida at the West Florida Research and Education Center in Jay, Florida in the far western panhandle. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about estimating yield in cotton. Estimating yield in cotton is important for a couple of reasons. One, it's nice to give a grower an idea of what he might expect and a return on his investment from that year's cotton harvest. It's also useful in situations where you might need to document yield loss due to a weather-related event such as a hurricane. This year we were hit with Hurricane Sally and you can see it affected our cotton yields pretty badly this year. You see a lot of this cotton leaned over at about a 45 degree angle. So yes, we are going to expect a hit on our cotton yield for that reason alone. However, this is also going to affect our cotton picking efficiency, which is something that we need to factor in when we're making our yield estimate calculation. The first thing we want to do is lay down a 10 foot row. So I've put up my tape measure for 10 feet and I'm going to count every harvestable bowl in this 10 foot row. Now sample size is important and sampling area is important. You want to make sure that you've got a representative area for that field and you're going to have to go to several parts of the field to make that estimate. What don't we want to count in our bowl count? We do not want to count bowls that will not be harvested. This bowl has failed to, to fluff out and it's going to be hard locked and it's probably not going to get picked by the picker. We will not count this bowl. This bowl here, we will count. This bowl here is hard locked. That bowl will not be counted. Bowl weight is another important consideration. Bowls generally weigh between two to six grams per bowl. So I just split the difference and call it four grams per bowl. If you're really so inclined, you can go ahead and pick a representative sample of bowls, weigh them and divide by that number, the number of bowls, and that'll give you a, no, a weight per bowl. Uh, generally speaking, for field purposes, we just use four grams per bowl. So just in case you have any doubt as to what a bowl might weigh, I brought out my lab scale here and it's a little bit windy i'm in the back of my truck here's a smaller bowl and it's coming in just over four grams per bowl um, that came from a lower part of the plant here's another bowl that came from a lower part of the plant and it's coming in around four grams as well the wind is changing the weight here here's a larger bowl that i picked from the upper portion of the plant and that one's coming in around six grams per plant or six grams per bowl there so on average i feel like four grams per bowl is is about right for for us if you wanted a real accurate estimation you'd need to go out into the field and collect a representative number of bowls from representative portions of the field i would collect at least 100 bowls go ahead and weigh them and divide by 100 and then you'll have a more accurate grams per bowl or uh, weight per bowl. Picker efficiency is also a big factor in how to estimate cotton yield. In a normal year, we can expect cotton efficiency, cotton picker efficiency to be between 75 to 90 percent. I usually estimate on the higher end, 85 to 90 percent of that cotton is going to be picked. Uh, but in this year, we're going to have to lower that number because of Hurricane Sally. We know that our picking efficiency is going to be not as high because we are, our cotton is leaned over. The rows are all intermixed. We're going to get a lot of uh, bowls popping off at the header. So we're going to have to lower that efficiency. I'm probably going to lower this efficiency down to about 75%. The other factor to consider here is turnout. You'll have a good idea of what your turnout is. Generally, we're about 38% or so. That's the number I typically use for commercial gin but that number can range anywhere between 35 and maybe even 43%. So you can look back at your records, you can kind of see what your varieties are performing, see what your turnout is, and use that number. For this demo, I'm gonna use 38%. Now it's late in the season and these are research plots, so I have the advantage of being able to show you the, what the harvest efficiency looks like on this crop. So you can see here a couple of rows that were not picked compared to a couple of rows that were picked. And it might be hard to see in the photo, but there's plenty of cotton still left here. So I do feel like a 75% harvest efficiency was about right for this season. So I have just finished counting all harvestable bowls along this 10 foot section here, and I come up with 108 harvestable bowls in a 10 foot row. Let's plug in our variables so far. 
we counted 108 bowls in a 10 foot row. Grams per bowl, we're gonna use four. We might be a little bit higher than that. Our picker efficiency, we're gonna use as 75%, which equals 0 0.75. Our percent turnout, we're gonna say is 38% which equals 0 0.38. And our row spacing here in J is 36 inches. So what's the equation? All we gotta do is we gotta multiply the grams per bowl times the number of bowls in 10 feet times the picker efficiency times the percent turnout. And divide all of that by the row spacing in inches and by a fudge factor which in this case is 0 0.008685. And that is gonna give us our pounds of lint per acre. So if we plug in the data that we've just collected from the field, we've got four grams per bowl times 108 bowls per 10 foot of row times 75% harvest efficiency times 38% turnout divided by 36 inch rows times that fudge factor 0 0.008685 and that's going to give us 394 pounds of lint per acre. Now some of you may not like the metric system and you might want to use ounces instead of grams. If you want to do that you can. All you got to do change grams to ounces and you're going to have to change the fudge factor. And we're going to change that number to 0 0.000 306 and that is going to give you the same result we just estimated 394 pounds of lint per acre and as i said we've had the advantage of already having harvested this plot and we can compare it to what our actual harvested yield was in this plot or in this experiment we harvested 1027 pounds of seed cotton and if we multiply that by a 38% turnout, we're gonna get 390 pounds of lint per acre, which is very close to the 394 that we estimated using the bowl count method. Another interesting question that we can ask is, what's a bowl worth? Well, if we have four gram bowls, so that's four grams per bowl, and we wanna convert this over to pounds, so we're going to convert it. There are 454 grams in one pound. And our current lint prices are 79 cents a pound. So that's $0.79 per pound of lint. And our turnout is going to be 38%. That means a four gram bowl is worth 0 0.0026 dollars per bowl. So it's about a quarter of one cent per bowl. A question we might wanna ask is, is it worth applying bowl openers? In order to answer that question, we need a few variables. What's the product cost? popular product that we apply around here at two pints per acre costs seven dollars per acre. Our application cost, so this is fuel, labor, I'm going to estimate to be about six dollars per acre. So our total cost of this application is going to be thirteen dollars per acre. Our row spacing in this area is 36 inches. Current price of cotton right now is 79 cents per pound of lint. Grams per bowl, we're going to keep it four. Picker efficiency, we're going to say is 87%. That would be more for a normal year this year because of Hurricane Sally. Of course, our picker efficiency has decreased. I'm estimating to about 75%. But for a normal year, uh, I think 87% is a reasonable picker efficiency and turnout we're going to keep at 38 percent. So how many additional bowls do we need to open in a 10-foot row to pay for this application cost? In order to answer that question we're going to take 
the application cost in dollars per acre times the row spacing times our fudge factor of 0 0.008685. We're going to divide all of that by the price of lint in dollars per pound, grams per, multiply that by grams per bowl, times our picker efficiency, and times our turnout. So if we plug in our numbers, we're going to have $13 per acre times a 36 inch row spacing times our fudge factor, 0 0.008685, divided by the current price of lint, 0 0.79, times 4 grams per bowl, times 87% picker efficiency, times 38% turnout. And if we multiply all that out, we get 3.9 bowls per 10 foot of row. If we have a typical plant spacing of about three plants per foot, that means we got 30 plants in a 10 foot row, we only need about four bowls to open. We need less than one bowl per plant to open in that 10 foot of row. So this seems like a pretty reasonable application to make, to pay for that application investment. Now you might say, well, I'm gonna be opening smaller bowls at the top of the plant and those bowls may not be four grams per bowl. Maybe they're only two grams per bowl. If that's the case, this number would double from 3.9 to about eight, and you would need eight bowls to open in a 10 foot row to pay for that application. Now the method I've outlined here is a much better method, more accurate method to estimate cotton yield. A lot of experienced agronomists and crop consultants can come out here and just by looking at the field, they can tell you a ballpark amount of what they think this field is gonna yield. Um, rule of thumb estimates such as 100 bowls per 10 feet equals one bale per acre. They're useful as well, uh, but the method we're showing here is a more nuanced and nuanced version of those estimations. So I hope this gives our crop consultants, producers, and extension agents a better idea on how to estimate cotton yield at the end of the season. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I am at the dirt dude, and you can find my daily activities updated there. Thank you, and I hope next year we can meet in person.